Hey guys, I'm Alina and today we are going to learn Le Prono Complement d'Object and Direct. So let's get started. So in my previous video, we discussed the topic Le Prono Complement d'Object Direct. And this one is indirect, which is COI. What we did in the last video was COD. And if you haven't watched that video yet, Check out this video above or in the description box. So COD and COI, they are very important topics. COD we have done. This is COI. Now, uh, it's the same concept that we uh, use the pronouns in French. Now, why do we use the pronouns? To uh, avoid repetition or to replace a noun. Now, COE is the second way of replacing, of using pronouns. Now, in this video, like we did in COD, again, we'll only be focusing on il, el, both singular and plural. So, this is what uh, it changes in the pronoun form. So, I'll just directly explain it to you with the help of an example and it will be more clear. So, I take the example, je demande a silver. Now, in this sentence, we need to change or we need to replace our CV with a pronoun. Now, how do we identify whether it is COD or COI? Now, identifying COE is very simple. All you need to look for is a in the sentence or its family, which includes O, a la or a, l apostrophe or O. If any of these is there in a sentence and it's underlined, which means that is what you have to replace, then it's COI. It's that simple. Only these and then you know it's COI. Another way you can use is by asking the sentence, the question qui, using the question word qui, which means who. Now, je demande a Sylvie. So if you ask, tu demande a qui, a Sylvie. Okay, so we get the answer. So key gives the answer in COI. And you need to look for the family of A. Now, coming back to the example, je demande a Sylvie. Now, a Sylvie will be replaced. It is singular. So for singular, it's Louis. And if it was plural, it was le. Okay, and same as CO, uh, in COD, we always place these pronouns before the Conjugated verb. So it becomes je lui de monde. Okay. Now in this case we only had a single verb. What if there are two verbs in a sentence? In that case you will always place these pronouns before the uh, infinitive verb. That is Mainly the second verb, whichever verb is in its infinitive form. Before that verb, you will place the pronoun. In that case, not before the conjugated verb. But if it is only a single verb, then always before the conjugated verb. Now, how do you do the negation? It's just the same as COD. To negate this, you will write je ne lui de monde. Ah. Simple. Around this whole Louis de Monde. Okay. Around that, no and pa will be placed. Now, where do we place these pronouns in passé composite? Same like COD, always before the auxiliary or the helping verb, which is always in passé composite, either avoir or être. So, a tes it's plural, that means we will place leur. Where? Before the helping or the auxiliary verb. Therefore, it would be tu, lur, a, telephony. Now, if you remember in COD, we do accordance. Like if our object, it is feminine or it is plural or it is both feminine plural, then we add something which is ES or E or NS 
in our past participle. Now, over here, our thesis, it is, our object is plural. So, will we add an S over here? No, we won't because only, a, uh, only in COD, we do the accordance. And right now, we are doing COI. So, there will be no accordance in COI. So, this is the final answer. Be very careful, no accordance in COI but only in COD. Now, I have taken another sentence over here. Let's do imperative in this. What is imperative? It is used to give an order or a command. Okay, so L learn XP. So, this is already in uh, the prono comprimo the object and direct form in COI form already. Now, we need to change it into imperative. Basic rule of imperative. We do not need the subject. So first and foremost, just cancel out L. Forget about it. What are we left with? Learn, explain. Now, just interchange their positions. So it becomes explain, learn. And as an imperative, we place a exclamation mark. As simple as said, the verb, then the pronoun. Now, if you want to negate it, then you come back to the original form, which is lur in front of the conjugated verb. So it becomes no, lur, explique, pa. In affirmative form, it will be the opposite which is the pronoun will be placed after the conjugated verb and in negation it would be the normal way which is the pronoun is before the conjugated verb. Now let's do an exercise of COI. First one, il doni le libre a same. So we have to change a same. So just you need to see whether it's singular or plural. So here it's singular, so Louis. So, where will be Louis placed? Before the conjugated verb. There is only one verb in the sentence. So, it becomes Il Louis Donne Le Livre. Okay. Next one. J'écris une lettre à mon ami. A mon ami, again, singular. Only one verb. So, before, écrit. So, je. Now just make sure over here. Why did I write like this? Because it's actually Louis Ekri. And when two vowels they come together, like here I and E, then the first vowel gets cancelled and an apostrophe takes its place. So Louis Ekri. Then next one, Monsieur Robert a expliqué au garçon. So, au garçon, it is plural. And if you notice, this is passé composé. Okay. So, in passé composé, our uh, pronoun will be placed before the auxiliary verb. So, it becomes Monsieur Robert. It's plural, so ler a xpk. And no accordance because we are doing COI. Now, if you notice, the last one is a bit different. Till now, what you did, you only had one uh, part underlined in the sentence. Either it is COI or it is COD. But if you look at the fourth sentence, we have two parts underlined over here. And one of them is COD and one of them is CO. Like, tu donné le Roma à ton, à ton père. So, le Roma, it's COD. And à ton père, it's COI. So, what do we do in such cases? Here, we always uh, put the pronoun for COD first, followed by the pronoun for COI. I'll write it and explain. So, le Roma, it is masculine singular. So, it becomes tu 
only one verb, therefore before the verb. So for COD we place le and for COI our tom pair is singular. So for singular we place lu and then doni. Thu le lui doni. That is how you do when you have to do both COD and COI in the sentence. Now this sentence can be given in two more ways. Either you have only COD and not a ton pair. So what will be the answer in that case? Like a ton pair is not underlined over here. Q donne le Roma a ton pair. So it becomes Q le donne a ton pair. This will be the answer if only le Roma is underlined. Now, if a ton pair is underlined, then you will use COI. This was COD. This was COD plus COI. And if only COI, then it is Q, Louis, Doni, Le, Roma. Okay, so you can see like how only one question can come in three forms. So if it is both, then always make sure to do COD first. And if only one of them is underlined, then only one you have to use. Either only COD or only COI. Now let's do a few questions in which COD and COI are mixed. So first you need to identify which one you need to do and then solve the question. So first one. You are envoye la letter a tonem. You can see we have a over here, which indicates that it is COI. So for COI, and just notice this is also passe composé. So before the auxiliary, you will place the pronoun. So the answer would be Q. Lua. Tulia, Tulia, envoye la lettre. Okay. The next one, elle, elle zone du monde le règle. Now, here we can see this is C O D. We do not have any A family over here. The simpler way to identify COD or COI. Le regle. Oh, this shows we are using on the moon. This whole shows that we are using passe composite. So it becomes L. Please do the moon. Now, regle. Is feminine and it is plural. So you will do the accordance and it becomes because this is COD and it is passe composé. So you uh, you'll do the accordance and it becomes Eliso de Monde. The next one El Napa Gagne Le Loto. So again, Le Loto, it's COD. So it will become. L na la pa gaine. So as you can see, the na pa is around the whole pronoun and the the auxiliary verb because it's passive composite, and we do not do any accordance. Though we should do any, uh, it's COD. We should do accordance. But as it's masculine and it is singular, so there's no need. Next one, a tu a tondu tezami. So as you can see, this is a slight different one from what we have done till now because it is an inversion. But no worries. So if you, uh, you know, don't want to make mistakes, just do the question slowly in normal form first. So if you look at this without inversion, then it is tu a a tondu a tezami. Right now, if you do uh, the first identified COD or COI, so it is COD, okay, 
Now, first, normally without inversion, use COD. This way you can do it easily and you won't make mistakes. So it's two atonyu atizami, sorry, two atonyu tizami. So it becomes two is a atonyu with an S because we'll do accordance. Okay. Now do the inversion because now it will be easier. What do we do in inversion? We invert the places of the uh, conjugated verb and the subject. The so subject here is few and the verb we use is a uh, replace their position. Now one thing that where will our COD, the pronoun, where will it go? So it will always be with the verb. So is a few Okay, just put the tube after a and rest remains the same. So in this way you can do it more easily. And now the last question. Elle parle à l'enfant. So this is, this tells us this is COI. So I'll write the answer over here. So it's singular. So we use Louis. So L Louis Pal. And that was all for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to hit the like button, share this video, and subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time I'm on YouTube. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care and bye bye.